Welcome back, everyone. What is a normal family these days? And does uh, anyone have the right to tell us if the relationship we're in or the family life we create is normal or not? Those are just two of the many questions our next guest addresses in her latest book. Judith Stacy is professor of social cultural analysis and sociology at New York University, and she's the author of Unhitched, Love, Marriage, and Family Values from West Hollywood to Western China. Welcome to Bay Sunday, Judith. Thank you so much for inviting me. This book really shatters the one-size-fits-all model of family. I hope so. <laughs> it should. Um, it's long overdue for shattering, I would say. Yeah, you know, most people, uh, I say most, I should say many people, you know, still believe that a married heterosexual couple is the foundation of uh, happiness for a family. But uh, you spend a decade interviewing people all over the world, uh, three different continents, and you really found so many huge differences in what you call family diversity. Talk about a couple of those. Yeah, well, the three research projects make up the um, basis of this book and a lot of other study over a long career. But I studied gay men and different forms of family life they were creating in the greater Los Angeles area. I went to South Africa because of the claim that if you legalize same-sex marriage, it's a slippery slope to legalizing polygamy. And in South Africa, they have legal polygamy and legal same-sex marriage. So I thought it would be really interesting to see how that worked out on the ground. Well, one of the most fascinating chapters you have in here uh, is uh, the, the, the Moscow Yes. Uh, culture in China. That's an, that's an ethnic minority group and it's actually a Buddhist culture in west, southwestern China and this is a family system in operation for over 2,000 years that is not based on marriage or on couples cohabiting at all. What is it based on? Maternal extended families. It's a uh, what anthropologists call a matrilineal family system. And adult children remain in the maternal family compound. And sex, love, romance are a nighttime activity. But family life and economic life, parenting, is a daytime activity that's performed by the um, brothers and sisters, the aunts and uncles, the grandmas and her brothers and sisters. Yeah, and, and women basically at 13 get their own, uh, their own they rooms and homes their and own. they can Choose Virginia Woolf would be thrilled. <laughs> yes, a room What's, of her own. What surprised you most about your research? Did you go well, in with a certain set of ideas and it just basically all collapsed? Yeah, well, I didn't go in with a very thick set because I've been doing research on family change for many, many, many years now, over three decades. So I'm used to uh, finding surprises. But I went in with certain um, expectations, and almost every time they were challenged pretty deeply. So I wound, wind up arguing for things that I would never have expected to. Well, and, and you know, what I do love about your book is that you really don't get into the arguments of for or against what works, what doesn't. Basically, you just kind of present this wide variety of, 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 of family models and family values that work. That's right. And I try to argue that um, integrity and respect and an acceptance of the inevitability of diverse forms of attachments and parenting is what we really have to come to terms well, and with. Th and that's what I wanted to ask you. This topic really divides people both, I think, personally and politically. So right. how can we better address this, not as an argument, but uh, uh, with more awareness? Well, you know, obviously you can never convince someone who has deep religious views that, you know, th that's not open to discussion. But what is open to discussion is what place that should have in other people's lives. And so what I'm hoping is that um, we can shift the national conversation a little bit to appreciate how creative people are on the ground and to give more respect to actual families. I tell lots of stories of particular families in this book who are doing a pretty good job and muddling through at times and accepting the lesser of evils but you know living real lives and I think it's time that our politicians caught up with our much more heroic families sometimes and I write a lot about the Scarlet Letterman and that was before Schwarzenegger I talk about the I was going to you know, I thought about asking Germany. you about that I mean that yeah. is just uh, you know it's just really sad to see all of this unfold and continue to unfold well and to me what's sad about it many things are sad about it but um, what I find saddest is the profound hypocrisy in our set of endless, you know, celebrating family values. 
and we don't really accept that there are differences in people's capacity for attachment and for monogamy and non-monogamy and I argue for honesty and integrity rather than a one-size-fits-all model. I like that and the phrase think about it family diversity I think that's uh, very very smart. Here to stay. Yeah. Yes. Judith Stacy's book is called Unhitched Love, Marriage and Family Values from West Hollywood to Western China. Judith, a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. You can find Unhitched at your local bookstore and online, uh, so pick it up. A lifelong passion for the sword inspired our next guest to write his first book. We're going to talk with the author of Sword and Swordsman when we return. While there are some home disasters you can't avoid, there is one you can.